According to the International Air Transport Association, on average, 8 million people fly every day. Knowing the number of flights taking place across the globe each day, it seems self-evident that most flights go off without a hitch. The chances of being injured in a plane crash are so low that it makes aviophobia seem a little silly. But then you hear the story of British Airways Flight 5390, and being afraid of flying starts to make a lot more sense. Want to know about it? Well, stay tuned to the video and watch the video till the end. Hello guys, welcome to the Mayday Investigation. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to get new updates about plane crashes and basically anything around air crash investigation. Hit the like button to show your support. And in this video, we are going to talk about British Airways Flight 5390. So without any further ado, let's begin. British Airways Flight 5390 was a scheduled passenger flight operated by British Airways between Birmingham Airport in England and Malaga Airport in Spain. On 10th of June 1990, an improperly installed panel of the windscreen failed at 17,400 feet, blowing the plane's captain, Tim Lancaster, halfway out of the aircraft. Lancaster's body was firmly pressed against the window frame for over 20 minutes. The co-pilot immediately attempted to control the aircraft and, once he had regained control, initiated a rapid descent to FL-110. He rearranged the autopilot, which had become disconnected by displacement of the control column during the commander's partial egress, and made a distress call on the frequency in use, but he was unable to hear its acknowledgement due to the noise of rushing air on the flight deck. There was some delay in establishing two-way communications, and consequently, the Bristol sector controller was not immediately aware of the nature of the emergency. This led indirectly to the LATCC watch supervisor not advising the aircraft operator of the incident, as required by the Manual of Air Traffic Services MATS, Part 1. Consequently, the initial of the British Airway Emergency Procedure Information Center plan was delayed. Meanwhile, the purser re-entered the flight deck and, having hooked his arm through the seat belts of the fourth crew member's jump seat, which was located behind the left-hand pilot seat, was able to assist the number three steward in the restraint of the commander. The two men tried to pull the commander back within the aircraft and, although they could see his head and torso through the left direct vision window, the effect of the slipstream frustrated their efforts. The number two steward entered the flight deck and was able to relieve the number three steward, whose arms were losing their strength, as they suffered from the frostbite and brushing through the windscreen frame. The number two steward grasped the commander's right leg, which was stuck between the cockpit combing and the control column, whilst his left leg was wedged against the seat cushion. The steward then strapped himself into the left jump seat and was able to grasp both of the commander's legs, but not before he had moved a further six to eight inches out of the window frame. He held him by the ankles until after the aircraft had landed. Passengers said the aircraft, a BAC-111, was gaining altitude over southern England when they heard an explosion as the cabin window blew out. The windshield was later found in Didcot, Oxfordshire. I could see a body hanging out of the window, with two men and a woman hanging onto his legs. A passenger, Margaret Simmons, told the Press Association, Britain's domestic news agency, they were trying to stop him from being sucked out. Chris Opie, another passenger, told the agency, there seemed to be some smoke immediately after the bang and suddenly there was sheer panic. An air hostess standing near us at the back of the plane started to cry. I thought we were going to crash and began praying. My girlfriend Nicola, who was sitting next to me, was crying and hugging our son James. Then one of the men on the flight deck came onto the loudspeaker announcement radio and said the windscreen had blown out and warned us to prepare for an emergency landing. Above Heathrow Airport airspace, Atchison managed to re-establish contact with the control tower and asked for a landing place. They then told him to land at Southampton Airport, but the airport was unfamiliar to Atchison. Because all the maps were lost, he had to land only with the help of the tower's directions. At 8.55, approximately 20 minutes after the window was blown out, British Airways Flight 5390 landed at Southampton Airport. The passengers were immediately evacuated. 
The captain's body was recovered by medics and he was quickly taken to the hospital. Accident investigator found that a replacement windscreen had been installed 27 hours before the flight and that the procedure had been approved by the shift maintenance manager. However, 84 of the 90 windscreen retention bolts were 0.026 inches too small in diameter, while the remaining were 0.1 inches too short. The investigation revealed that the previous windscreen had been fitted with incorrect bolts, which had been replaced on a like-for-like -like basis by the shift maintenance manager without reference to the maintenance documentation. In order to save time, as the plane was due to take off soon and there was a tight schedule, the air pressure difference between the cabin and the outside during the flight proved to be too much, leading to the failure of the windscreen. The incident also brought to attention a design flaw in the aircraft of the windscreen being secured from the outside of the aircraft, putting greater pressure on the bolts than if they were secured from the inside. The pilot's windscreen are of five-ply glass slash vinyl butyl construction, the innermost glass laminate being low-tempered to form a splinter shield in the event of a bird strike. Windscreen heating is applied primarily to improve the impact resistance of the windscreen at low outside air temperatures. The windscreen is not designed on the plug principle, where cabin pressure effectively contributes to holding it in place, but it fitted from the outside of the aircraft and is secured by means of 90 countersunk bolts, also fitted from the outside. A large number of bolts are required to prevent leakage of pressurized air through the window seal, but the force of internal air pressure could be satisfactorily resisted by far fewer bolts. With earlier officers having not searched for or collected the bolts from the site, PC Tony Nash returned to the site and located a number of the windscreen bolts that assisted in determining the cause of the incident. Investigators found the British Airways Birmingham Airport shift maintenance manager responsible for installing the incorrect bolts during the windscreen replacement and for failing to follow official British Airways policies. They also found fault with British Airways policies, which should have required testing or verification by another individual for the critical task. Finally, investigators found the local Birmingham airport manager responsible for not directly monitoring the shift maintenance manager's working practices. Captain Tim Lancaster miraculously survived. His body was subject to extreme conditions, in temperatures as low as negative 17 Celsius, accentuated by high winds. As a result, he suffered frostbite and fractures to several bones. In an episode of Air Disaster, he said, I remember the fact I couldn't breathe. I remember seeing the tail of the aircraft and the engine. And then I don't remember much at all. Only five months after this incident, Tim Lancaster returned to his flying career and retired in 2008. Co-pilot Alastair Atchison also continued his career and had his last commercial flight in 2015. Now that we've come to the end of this video, I want to thank you for sticking with me and I'd love to know what you think of it. Just comment down below. Also, if you like this video, make sure you like it and stay safe. Today's video is over. But if you want to see more, there's one on your screen right now. And there are a few more videos coming soon about the air crash investigation. I'll see you in the next video.